break down the madness that was game four. Thank you very much, Pyrotechnics. Madness indeed. And to illustrate how much of a madness and a comeback by H2K, SK get the first dragon, the most out of the league. 18 of the 23 games they played, they got first dragon. They've gotten the first three dragons in a row over half their games, 13 out of 23, and they won 12 of those 13 games. And now they lose one. What a testament to H2K fighting it back. Yeah, but it gets even like more intense than that. SK Gaming were 5,000 gold up at 20 minutes on the clock. Do you want to know when they did that last? Against Unicorns of Love. And they held that gold lead until 29 minutes against Unicorns of Love last week. And Unicorns in Game 5 started pulling it back. Today, between 20 minutes and 29 minutes, H2K pulled back a 10,000 deficit. They were five down and they were five up at 29 minutes. SK made mistake after mistake and Lulix on Gragas just went yeah. fantastic. I'm going to stop you there because I feel like you're going to keep ranting. Let's talk about, it's good, it's beautiful rant though, but we got to continue. Let's talk about picks and bans and early game and how H2K managed to fall so far behind before they came back. Well, the Gragas didn't work that well in the early game, to be honest. But on the other side, Sven Skarin was here to stay. He was like, okay, four games are enough today. I want to enjoy Spain. I want to <laughs> hang out in the sun have a drink or two, and then just let's end this quickly. He was all over the place. Like he said, he was killing everything. He was connecting every coup that he tried to land. He was just doing amazing work on that. But the later the game went, the more irrelevant Swenskarin became. And the rest of the the rest of SK wasn't able to catch up. And that was the point where the Gragas started to make sense because he was able to single out targets. He was able to either get forgiven away from the team or pull them into them so they can kill them. And it was just a really good pickup then. Yeah, first 10, 15 minutes of the game, I was like, wow, this is vintage SK. This game is over. And the game started to go on. I was like, oh, no, this is the SK in the playoffs. That just managed <laughs> to fall apart. Um, then this actually said it before in the last game. Oh, now they know how to play versus Lucian. And Trevor, we have a replay to illustrate how they kept finding Forgiven when they needed to. I'll try not rant this time. <laughs> Pull that replay <laughs> up onto allowed. your screen. Um, Dentus said it best. Take a look at Forgiven's positioning. And Lulex, at this point in the game, had already singled Forgiven out two or three separate times. Flash body slam connecting the explosive pass to knock him into reuse waiting hands. And you know, H2K are just going to zone away the tanks and then clean up the team fight. The thing that I love is the fact that Lulex, let's be honest, he sucked in the laning phase, but once they were roaming and moving, he kept doing that time and time again. Absolutely. A thing that we have to focus in this situation was the shockwave. Have you seen the shockwave? I mean, once the Gragas was onto Forgiven, Fox tried to be relevant and throw the shockwave in there. It just didn't work at all. I am so frustrated with Fox's Oriana. Please, Fox, I love you. Please stop picking Oriana. You're not playing it correctly in teamfights. He's not using any of his skills in the area of Forgiven. Forgiven is an amazing player. Just put your E on him. Give him the W speed boost. Shockwave the assassin's trying to kill him. Anything. Just influence what Forgiven's doing in teamfights. You'll win all these teamfights. But all of his skills are just off, and it's so frustrating to watch. I think this is the first time Fox has underperformed in multiple games back to back to back, all split long, because he actually really stepped up and uh, in the semifinals, he had some really amazing moments. And unfortunately now, this is not the same level that we're expecting. Sven still doing what Sven does. I actually think Enrated is playing way better than he did in the semifinals. But when you don't have a mid lane that can back up that front line, it's just, it's falling to pieces. Yeah, pretty frustrating for Sven at this point because it happened against you a while as well before his Lee Sin got banned out. Um, we're talking about Fox, of course, but Ryu, Continuing the trend that we've seen from him after quarterfinals, where we said before, you know, he's more for utility, he pushes up the waves. He's showing game and game again that he can dominate in team fights as well. Ryu is just a dominating player overall. Once the playoffs hit, he started to roll. Yes, he has some shaky moments, but overall, if you put him on comfort champions, like that Cassidy that he used to play a lot in Korea, like that Zed, where he's a legend on, if you put him on those champions and you don't react properly to it, that guy is able to just carry the whole thing. I agree. I still think HDK need to have a measure of control. There was a standing ovation in the audience after they won that previous game. And the first 15 minutes of this match, HDK didn't deserve to win. If you watch it, if the game had like stopped there, they didn't deserve it. But what happened after that was fantastic. So they just need to find a balance and temper their aggression in the early stages or have a, a bigger impact with their champion picks. I think it's fair to say the HDK didn't win this game. SK lost it. Well, Sven Skarin tried to win the game, and then SK <laughs> lost it. Yeah, so in terms of uh, if we look at mindset, 
Maybe the fact that they let go in the beginning of the game for H2K signal to me, the same that I saw in uh, the semifinals of like, you don't have the stamina to go through, they maybe not want it enough, but they have found it now. They have, and I think if you want to talk mindset, the biggest thing that stands out to me, SK lost in the same way they lost to Unicorns of Love, um, had a massive lead and then poor decisions cost them. For H2K, the way this game started, it was how they lost to Fnatic in game five of their series. Poor mechanical decisions, poor decision making around objectives, poor team fights. But H2K fixed it. H2K turned around the problem that cost them a place in the final last week in this game to get them another match. I think confidence and uh, bravado is going to be on their side, but they just need to, to reel it in. Yeah, absolutely. If you talk about mentality, there are two important things. If you're a team that's far ahead and you throw that game in the mid to late, you're going to be down when it comes to mentality. And the second thing is, if you're a team that is behind and you turn it around, you're going to be hyped beyond belief. <laughs> so, in terms of mentality, I have to give this to H2K. We'll see if they can carry it through. It's all come down to a single game. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back as H2K and SK go at it for third place in the European LCS playoffs.